Welcome to our course, Projects in Electron by Edgeonics. Now we're moving into our weather application where we're actually going to be dependent on an external resource to get data. Actually, a few external resources. So as we go through this introduction to the application, I'll identify some of the resources that we're going to be using to make everything come together. All right, so our application files, there's nothing outside of the standard that we've been doing. So we've got our three main files here. Well, again, we're including a CSS to break that out and modularize things. And we've got our bootstrap.js as well. Now, getting into the functionality of this, we're, I'm going to go through the flow kind of in the order that things are going to get created for us. So the first thing we're going to do is create a method that's going to handle our XML HTTP request. This is going to help us when we're sending data out to an Internet resource and bringing it back. Then we create another method. So there's basically two methods in the back end of this that we encapsulate all this functionality. So inside of this method, we're going to handle the following task. We're going to get the computer's IP address. Now with that, we've got to do some manual parsing because of the format that it comes back in. So there's not anything there to really help us pick that apart. Although when we get into the weather API, there is something there. It comes back in a nice clean format and we don't have to worry about manually parsing it. So from the IP address, we're going to take that, send it to another service that's going to give us the longitude and latitude of our location based on our IP address. Because the weather API is going to need that information to identify us. So we take those coordinates and we send it to openweathermap.org, which is the resource that we're going to be using as we build this application. Then we populate our view with the weather info. So the information coming back from openweather.org is in a JSON format. This lets us just access the JSON object and do something like dot field name, and we don't have to worry about parsing. So we are going to make use of a JSON object to get this data and then put it into a variable and be able to access it in a fairly easy manner. It's going to require a little bit of understanding of how open weather sends its data back because it has uses dictionaries, so we have key values. But sometimes you have dictionaries and dictionaries, and then you have to access things within basically an array to get at the inner dictionary. But we'll see how that works. Then you'll see how it translates into the code to access the proper fields inside of our application. So the user is going to click Find Weather. It'll go get their IP. And then it's going to send their location information to Open Weather Map. We're going to bring it back and display it in the app. We're also going to do a conversion because everything is going to come back in metrics. So Cellulose will be for our temperatures. We're going to do a conversion to Fahrenheit for the current temperature just to have that calculation in there. So that is our weather application. This ought to be a fun application to build and to also see how we get this information from the Internet, bring it down into the app, and then display it in our view. We're going to now start our weather app project. And I'm going to go through and show you what the weather app does. So this is the application. And when you click on Find Weather, it uses your IP address and fills in the boxes here, which you can see have already been done. So the information is pulled from the Internet, brought back in. And what we do here is the temperatures are in Celsius. We take the first one, which is the main temperature, or the current temperature, and convert it so that it reads as Fahrenheit. Then at the bottom, we display the IP address that we're using to obtain this information. So the weather information is coming from this website, which is openweathermap.org. Now to use it, you'll need an API key. I think if I stretch this out, we'll see the main menu. And here we are. So the API is where we're going to be. And to get an API, it's free. So you can just sign up. You'll have your API key. That's going to be used as we call to the website and get information from it. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and get into our new project and start building it out. I'm inside of Visual Studio Code, and I have my directory created. We're going to go ahead now and initialize it. So I'm going to do an npm init. I'll just go through the defaults on that. And yes. So we have our package JSON at this point. 
And I am going to now add in our other files that we're going to need, like our HTML files, our JavaScript files. So the first one I'm going to have, I'm just going to do a weather HTML. We can also do a weather.js. We're going to have a style sheet. So I'll do a style.css, our bootstrap. Okay. And then inside of this bootstrap, I'm going to paste in some boilerplate code. So nothing really going on here besides what we've seen before over and over and save that inside of our JSON. We need to add our startup script. So here we'll do a start colon and electron dot with a comma. And there we go. And then for our style sheet, I'm just going to paste in some styling. So nothing to learn here, just some CSS. And inside of our package JSON, let's see here, we have our index.js, which we want to change to bootstrap. And let's go ahead and try to start our application. There we go. So that is out of the way. We know the application should at least run from this point, and there's nothing that we have in here that can reach up and bite us later on. So we're going to go ahead and start with our HTML and create an HTML document. So we'll have a doc type, and then we're just going to go down the line with our HTML. So we'll do an HTML. We'll do head on this. We'll bring in our meta. So it's going to be a char set that we've seen before. UTF-8. I'm going to do a title. And this can be whatever you want. I'm just going to do open weather map API weather app and close. I'll put a link in here. So we'll have in relation to style sheet. And then the type is going to be text slash CSS. And the href is just right into the root for our style.css. And I'll close that out. Close out head. And we'll start body. So this part here, we're going to put inside of a div with the class wrapper. And we'll close that down here. And this is really just going to be some heading information. So let's do weather application. And then we can do to find what temperature or to find your temperature. Click the button below. And then what we want to do is add a button. And this is going to be a class of button CSS. The ID, we can do show temp. And then we're going to have an on click, which is going to go to a function inside of our JS file called find weather. And then we'll just do find weather and close that out. Okay, so our div ends here. We're going to have another div, which actually is going to start the form for this. This is going to be output temp the capital T. And what we want here is hidden equals true. So what this means is basically until you click the button, nothing is going to show. We'll start our form. We'll have a couple of BRs here for line breaks. And then we can go ahead with our labeling. So degrees and Celsius. We're going to do an input box with the type of text and an ID of Fahrenheit. And then a BR down here, and that will start the next set. And for this, I can actually just copy and paste because everything's going to kind of be the same formatting and then just change out whatever needs to be changed here. And let's see, this is kind of giving an error because of that quote there. So what I'm going to do is just recopy these. All right, so that gives us a few of them there and then just change our labeling. So next we're going to have the temperature in Fahrenheit. And this right here is going to be called, actually this is Fahrenheit. This up here is going to be just temperature. We'll put a styling on this as well. 
for color, we can do B, G, G, F, O, O. All right, so we have temperature and Fahrenheit. We're going to do wind speed here. And then this will just be called wind speed. Then we'll have maximum temperature. And this right here is just going to be temp underscore max. Then we'll have the minimum temperature. So I'll just copy this. So minimum. And this right here is going to be temp min. We'll have a description. And this right here just be description. And then we're going to have the humidity. Same here. We're going to have an area name. And Open Weather Map sometimes doesn't really give you even your city name. It's just might be a county name or a part of a county. Sometimes their naming is a little little bit odd. Maybe not exactly what you're expecting, but it will be the area that you're expecting. And we're going to do pressure. And down here is going to be IP kind of by itself. So that's going to be an input. And ID is just IP. And we'll close our form. We'll close our div. This is going to be a reference to our script. So that's going to be a source of weather.js. And we'll close our script. Then the body and HTML. Save. So let's now run this and just see what we have as far as UI. So there we go. All right, next we are going to get into the back end of our application with our JavaScript file.